So hello to everybody. Uh, I think that we can open now the session. It's my great pleasure to welcome you here to this uh, beautiful location at Casa Seat to a new edition of our Carnet Insights, a format that is gaining visibility more and more in the community. And this is also due to great guests like you, the three of you that I will introduce now to you and I will don't and I don't lose more time and will like read what you gave us um, to introduce you. So Professor Dr. Jose Olguin Beras, welcome very much, uh, is William Hart Professor and Director of the Center for Infrastructure Transportation and the Environment at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York. He received numerous awards like the White House Transportation Champion of Change Award, the Milton Pikarski Memorial Award, and the National Science Foundation Careers Award. He research, his research focuses on freight transportation and humanitarian logistics. He received his PhD from the University of Texas in Austin, um, and uh, his Master uh, of Science at the Universidad Central de Venezuela. Very much welcome you here, Thank and you. I'm looking forward to your, to your presentation and to your answers later. So our next guest um, is Adria Gomila. He is an industrial engineer and the director of mobility at the Barcelona City Council. Um, he has always carried out his professional activity in relation to mobility, mainly in the Barcelona City Council, where he has held various positions since 2001. And I also very much welcome you, and to, I'm looking forward to hear your position from the, from the city side. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, and the last but not least, uh, Professor Dr. Alberto Sanfeliu. He is full professor of computational science and artificial intelligence at the Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya here in Barcelona. He is coordinator of the research group Artificial Vision and Intelligent System, VIS, and head of the research line Mobile Robotics of the IRI, the Instituto de Robotica e Informatica Industria. He is also president of the Spanish Society for Research and Development in Robotics, and he is former scientific director of the Unity of Excellence Maria Metsu of the IRI, and also former director of the IRI and uh, former director of UPC's Automatic Control Department and past president of the Spanish Association of Pattern Recognition. So, very much welcome you also very warm here uh, to this event. During the next hour, where I'm very much looking forward, we will talk about the news in last mile urban distribution. Last mile distribution affects all of us, I think, and um, we all now know what last mile distribution means. Because the ones who didn't know it yet, during the last two years, we all experienced that it affects us. But last mile distribution affects the normal distribution, I think, in a new way, introducing new modes of and new issues of the, of the people and of the users. And with e-commerce, that also like raises the or, ra or has risen the last uh, two years also, and, and still climbs climbs um, uh, with revenues reaching 1.5 trillion U.S. dollars in Europe. Um, there are new patterns that that will be introduced in the delivery system, which is not yet or was not prepared in the last 30 years in, in, in this sense, I think. Um, the average share of e-commerce users, it is an, an interesting fact, in Europe today is of 53%. Uh, but this is like the average in Europe. For the most mature markets, it's even higher. It's higher than 60% of e-commerce users. So imagine what the, these new issues um, are about 
to affect us and to impact in the in the distribution, not only like in in the traffic, but also in climate and, and in everything. So we will talk today about challenges of online orders, of short delivery times, of crowd shipping um, and overlap of uh, customer time windows, perhaps, but also and most important, per perhaps, also on new delivery technologies, like uh, autonomous ground vehicles. I don't know if you follow Carnet. Um, last Friday, we had um, in Espluras uh, the presentation of our, of our ground vehicle, which we developed also together with Alberto Sanfeliu. Um, and it was like a great event. We presented this ONA to the Minister of of transportation to the National Minister of Trans Transportation, but also other kind of vehicles that you see today in the city are around to deliver with patinetes, so with, with step scooters, mm -hmm. with bicycles, and so with, with new light uh, ways to, to move parcels also around, because parcels are also at in a new dimension. They are lighter, they are m less in volume, and so these are the issues and challenges that we are going to discuss today. To open our round table here, we will do it like in the following way. I will ask our invitation, uh, our invitees like three questions that they will answer. Um, and after this round, I will open like to the to a Q and A to the to you to the audience. Okay, so let's start with the first question, and I start with you, Adria. <laughs> um, what are the requirements, uh, or what requirements are necessary to enable the distribution of last mile in the city? Um, I think that the requirements uh, should should push two main objectives uh, in one hand um, to to be an um, an activity with a high efficiency it's necessary uh, that the um, all the the activity in the city economical activity but um, also any activity uh, needs needs an, an uh, high efficiency uh, mm -hmm. goods distribution, okay, and and this is uh, every every day and every year. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a more it's it's an it's becoming a, a more clear evidence because uh, every time there are more activities that depend on an, an efficient logistic. Okay, this is in one hand. The other hand is that uh, it's necessary to reduce. The, uh, the externalities or the impact that this activity, this distribution activity, has over uh, the rest of the of the of the city, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is uh, is a very wide range of impacts. It's uh, about air quality. It's about noise. It's about accidents. It's about uh, use of public space, and and, and, and there's. Um, and there's a, a long list. Okay, uh, so in my opinion, uh, we need we need to develop these two objectives in, in parallel, uh, and and I think that we are lucky. We are lucky. Why? Because uh, there are there are uh, objectives that uh, can can be uh, complementary one each other. If if uh, one deliver. Uh, it's uh, it's made in an in a not efficient way. Uh, there's a higher impact over the the, the city because it needs to go three times. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, no efficiency. The, uh, the lack of, of efficiency uh, lacks or increases the, the impacts and the, the bad impacts. Okay, so uh, I think that, the, in my opinion, the main idea is to develop systems. That uh, that improve these two aspects, and it's possible. It's not uh, opposite objectives. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Yeah, very interesting. So, 
Jose, what do you think about the requirements? I think basically the, uh, I mean, uh, what Adrian says is, uh, is, uh, is quite correct. That will also need to add the, that we also need to keep an, an eye on unintended effects that goes beyond the traditional uh, negative externalities produced by traffic. One of the things that we have found is that the, uh, there had been, there is some sort of coevolution between the new technologies and the demand. Uh, think about e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Basically, in 2009, basically it was the first time that we collected data about the generation of uh, e-commerce purchases in the U.S. Basically, the rate of, let's say, for the rate per person per day, number of orders per day was 0 0.04. Basically, for every 25 citizens in the U.S., one internet delivery was was made in a single day. If we roll the clock forward, nowadays in the city of New York, for instance, the rate of generation is 0.25. That means for every four individuals, one internet delivery is, is, is made. In the city, in the metropolitan area of New York, from 20 million people, in 2009, was basically times uh, point to, uh, 0 0.04 is basically about 800,000 deliveries. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, at 0.25 is 5 million. <laughs> you see, in essence, what we see here is that uh, an explosion of the demand. And so how we need to manage that. In essence, uh, technologies tend to, when they, are, when they lead to reduction in, the, in, in cost, basically they lead to an explosion of deliveries. And that's something we need to manage. Yeah. And that's why you see, and with COVID, basically, that rate from 0.25 jumped to 0.29. Mm -hmm. You see, in essence, we need to manage that. Yeah. That's, that's important in the, in the longer term. That's true. Alberto, what's your opinion on that? <laughs> well, my perspective is, is different from yours uh, because I am designing the robots and I am trying to put navigation in these robots in the city. And we have another requirements, more technical requirements, and more city requirements because actually from the perspective of moving a mobile robot, a ground robot with wheels or with uh, legs, uh, it has to move in a surface that is uh, prepared for that. And that, that is okay now that the, the cities are prepared for uh, wheelchairs. And then that means that they are prepared for putting this kind of robots. But uh, we, if we are talking about ground robots, if we are talking about flying robots, there is not this restriction, but there is another restriction. For example, obstacles, the trees are obstacles, the cables are obstacles. And actually, at present, in, at least in Europe, is not allowed to fly uh, drones in the city for parcel distribution, mm -hmm. for example. That, that is one of the requirements, but we need more requirements. We need uh, actually then the communication, um, the con connectivity with the, the robots and the different centers work well. And that is something that is okay, that is, is quite good, but uh, still there is some um, missing on this point that has to be improved in the cities. There are more issues about that. Uh, <clears throat> for example, if we are talking about distribution with a swarm of robots, that means uh, not only one robot, several robots that go in a van and uh, stops in a place, this van, and then from that go out and go to distribution and then return back to this uh, van and then go back to the warehouse. Then we need additional t uh, uh, technical requirement for that. Mm -hmm. And also, finally, I will talk about the call center. I say, when we are thinking to, to have this robot in the city, we need a call center where it is going to be doing the routing of all the uh, parcel routing. And actually, also, if there is something happens to a robot, then typically that is going to happen, then the, the robot stops in a place because there is a hole or there is a barrier, then someone has to take control on that. And that is going to be from the control center. And actually, not only that, could be that we need some people in the place to go and pick up the robot. That is what is usually done at present with the autonomous uh, taxis and then are driving not here, mm -hmm. but in, in other cities in US and in other countries. And that is things that we have to think about it, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Thank you. So I will direct the next question also to you, to start with you. Um, what changes involve the distribution of last mile products in the current delivery system? What do you think? Well, uh, there are different issues here that has to be taken into account. As I told before, uh, at present, I mean, there are hubs. There is these uh, satellites. I don't know what is the, exactly the name that is used. Then where the, from the uh, big warehouse, they bring the van to these hubs mm. and they put in lockers the material that you probably know in the e-commerce that is a typically done. And at present, there are already in the cities, there are trials that are being tested that are from these hubs that could be a parking lot or could be another place. Uh, they go with the bicycles or the whatever the, the riders <coughs> pick up the, the goods and distribute. That will be in the future with these uh, autonomous platforms. That will be in one place, that could be, for example, a parking lot, and they will be the place then they will charge, and then also they will pick up, there will be the distribution of the goods, and from there they will distribute in the last mile, and that will be the center of distribution. But actually, when they do that, they have to do the distribution, but probably they also will collect some waste and will re come back with that to the same place. And that will be a collector, a garbage collector, in some, way, some, mm. in some way, that could be also done. And there are other possibilities that are going to happen on, on that. And, and also, uh, as I said before, there's going to appear new jobs. <laughs> uh, the new jobs is the call center, the maintenance, the, and, and also others that we, when we have been studying well, the new roles that is going to happen in the with when you include robots and human at the same time, they're going to appear at least, at least seven types of categories. And the last one is the bystander, the bystander or the pedestrians, <laughs> and the pedestrians are part of the of the play because the, the robots are going to be in a pedestrian area, and are going to and they have to stop or they have to take another change the trajectory. And the person has to know that what is the, has to trust in, on them, on the robots. And that is an issue that we don't know now. When we do trials in the cities, we, uh, uh, we realize on that. But it's something that the people don't know at all. And they have to be uh, uh, culturized on that. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of issues that we have, that we're going to be changed, not only the distribution, not only logistic, but also the way that the people is thinking at present how the tasks are going to be done. Mm. And in the future, this distribution will be, now we're thinking about last mile distribution. But in the future, I don't know when, uh, probably we will have our own robots. And then our robot will be in, the, in our house, or will be in our shop, or will be wherever. And that could be then this robot will be sent to pick up something in some place and, and transport it mm. to one place that we want to assign. Mm. And that will be another way. That is the next part of the, this distribution. And that will have a lot of implication in the city. That I, that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everyone will have his robot like <laughs> walking with them, right? <laughs> so what do you think, Jose, about like the new <coughs> distribution with autonomous platforms or with new products? I, I think that because of the gravity of the climate change, mm. basically a cities will be forced to implement I mean, relatively drastic measures. In NASA, using satellite uh, uh, measurements, estimate that 70% of the CO2 produced from fuel is producing cities. Mm. Because cities and metropolitan areas, it's not only the urban core, it represent, I mean, economic powerhouses. Uh, the top 600 cities and metropolitan areas produce 60% of the global GDP. In essence, there is tremendous, uh, as you can see, 60% of the GDP produced by top 600 metropolitan areas 70% of CO2 produced metro metropolitan areas. In essence, we are going to be forced to reconcile the economic prowess of metropolitan areas with the tremendous environmental impacts. And uh, that is going to be a tremendous challenge that goes beyond uh, logistics in the sense. We need to uh, be prepared to transform the economic nature of, uh, of our cities. Uh, in what way? 
in land use. We just finished a major study on what we call freight efficient land uses. And the reality is that um, in most cases, in most cities have land use patterns that are not conducive to efficient logistics. Why do I mention that? Well, the reality is that the, uh, there are multiple sources of economic inefficiencies and environmental inefficiencies that the previous speaker have alluded to. But some of the most significant ones are related to land use. In the sense, we need to foster compact supply chains. Mm -hmm. If we have supply chains crisscrossing the metropolitan area, as is typically happening in many cities, in which you have the port in this side, distribution centers on the other sides of the of the city and manufacturing and somewhere else. Basically, the amount of externality produced is gigantic. And on top of that, uh, there are other factors. Climate change belongs to uh, one of the most complicated subjects uh, in, in, in game theory. Climate change is what we call a collective action problem. It's a problem in which the incentive of the players that could solve the problem do not align with the solution of the common good. And basically that also has implications for logistics, the same as basically the political system that uh, regulates this. In essence, I see that there will be a need to use a basically sophisticated policies. Complex problems, congestion is one of them, is a do not have complex problems like congestion, climate change and the like, they defy simple solutions. There are no magic bullets. There is no single, basically, solution that will be produce the intended, effect, the intended effect. What I see developing is uh, sophisticated solutions that encompass technology, changes in land use, and also demand patterns. If we have like a, a six to pro increase in e-commerce in the U.S. in basically 15 years, uh, 13 years, I mean, this is impossible to cope by supply side interventions. I do know, I have been working in transportation for more than 40 years, and I do not know of any policy that produces two, three, four times the capacity to mm -hmm. distribute. I, I, I don't know that exists. In essence, uh, the only way to cope with this gigantic increase in number of delivery is demand management, inducing people you like, like you and me to basically uh, basically reduce our demand patterns. Mm -hmm. Because uh, supply size, either from the technology or the network or the roads, will not cope. Mm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so this is... <laughs> Yeah. Quite a load. <laughs> yeah, quite a lot, <laughs> and also to reduce our demand patterns, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yes, Adria, you you will have perhaps also something to announce on that. <laughs> that that uh, fits. <laughs> yes, well, I'm, I'm going to answer the question, trying to make some links, okay? Yes. And, uh, and, and explaining yes, for sure. uh, in <laughs> same times. What's, what is our strategy or what are we doing, okay? To trying to make these four things mm -hmm. in the same way. Answer, link, link, and explain our strategy. Um, I think that the, the most important thing to try to answer these questions is and, and going, uh, going to that objectives is to, um, to make a really good uh, public-private collaboration. Yeah. Why? Why? Because this is a private activity, and uh, we need we need to put some public regulations for the the, the general interest, okay, to a a, a private activity. Uh, so we can make these um, regulations only from the, the the public sector side, okay. Uh, but I think this is not this is not a good idea because uh, the ones who know the, the their activity are, are those those privates. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that uh, we have made um, a, a diagnosis of the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have prepared some uh, basic strategy, 
and now we are going to share this strategy to this uh, to this sector uh, to uh, to define to, to make the, the final um, definition of this strategy and this is not only to put public regulations uh, also is to detect uh, where is more necessary the, uh, that the administration helps helps mm, those activities, but not only uh, help just putting money mm, to every uh, everybody, no, trying to incentivate uh, those behaviors or activities that uh, that that uh, complains that the two the, the two in my opinion main objectives, the efficiency of the activity and reduce reduce the this these negative impacts. And um and trying to make a link with the, the this uh you said the the how to um the about the demand, okay? Uh, that if it's necessary or not necessary to to uh make some actions over the demand. Um, in my opinion, uh, the, 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 the main aspect about the demand is uh, how that demand is, is supplied. Uh, this is not the same. This is not the same if I ask for, I don't know, a, a bottle of water and I ask uh, and, and they, they uh, bring me that bottle in, in one hour or two hours mm -hmm. of or if I ask for water, <laughs> and, and, and it's maybe water it's necessary <laughs> to drink before, but and, and there are three days, uh, uh, three day periods. So uh, if, if we, uh, it's important, it's important that the behavior of the demand mm, about these objectives, okay? So, uh, in my opinion, the, uh, when when the public administrations are we, we are helping some or incentivate some actions, uh, we should incentivate uh, those actions that has benefit for this public objective. And and finally about um, this, um, what to do about this? <laughs> um, uh, what what should be? I don't know. I have my idea. What should be the position of the public administration? Uh, about these very innovative uh, ideas and projects and so on. Uh, two ideas. This is my opinion. First of all, first of all, uh, we we should provide a, a physical scenario uh, to to allow test and, and so on uh, to to build this the, this this far future. Okay. And and, and second second. I think that um, w we must provide this basic mm, scenario, but uh, I, I think we, we should look for these short-term benefits because if you are developing all of this, you are developing some <laughs> some slides, some aspects that are necessary for build this this future. For example, how do you identify the the different. Uh, Goods or things or um, I don't know the, the the strategy and so on. So I think that uh, for the from the um, public sector point of view, uh, give the chance to 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 make this test and try to take advantage uh, and and get some short term benefits. Uh, just maybe uh, taking some the, the the some piece of this. Uh, and I think that apply this to this general strategy, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe uh, be, be ready uh, to this long-term future, but uh, there are some pieces that you are developing now that could be in a, in a, a short-term benefit. Not, not only, mm, mm -hmm. I, I say, I repeat, it's the last time, I hope, <laughs> the same <laughs> idea, not, not only for this for reduce the negative impacts, also to increase the efficiency of the activity. Mm. This is mm. my opinion about this. Mm. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, but you also like wanted to to say something about the strategy of the city, right? 
so always uh, <laughs> okay yes thank you, thank you. <laughs> so perhaps it's, 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 it's now the, yes. the, the time we are, we are for starting to, to yes yes we, we be have more technical again <laughs> we have presented this basic strategy i say basic uh, i like to say basic because uh, now uh, next week and in the next um, some months uh, we are going to make a uh, um, several meetings with uh, with this um, distribution sector and, and the different actors and so on uh, with the idea to have we will say the Barcelona uh, good distribution strategy I don't know the name it has uh, and and but th there are some it's a, a basic strategy okay because then then uh, there are a lot of good initiatives uh, very good initiative from different universities, companies, other administrations, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, try to, to make an agreement what are the, the best practices on this. And uh, we are mm, working with other administrations, mm -hmm. uh, trying to, to, to find this agreement and, and taking, taking other, other uh, works already done. And uh, we are going to help those activities that follow that strategy. So we are trying, trying to help the private sector to uh, to that their activity is very uh, the most <laughs> the most near uh, possible of this strategy, knowing that this is a very uh, complex wall mm. with uh, a lot of different uh, activities, mm, very different one at each other, with a, a very uh, high speed evolution. Uh, there's something very easy, but uh, ten years ago, uh, most of the deliveries were made in the in the in the floor in the floor stage. Mm -hmm. okay? Now there are a lot of deliveries that are in the, in the first, second, third. Mm -hmm. Things is changing in, yeah. in mm -hmm. hospital, in houses, in yeah. In, yeah. in I don't know a everywhere, and um, and well. So this should be a basic strategy because uh, there are a lot of different actors that uh, will play we hope this this um, this strategy and should be dynamic because this is changing very quick. Yeah, thank you. So I, I like very much the idea of public-private collaboration, <laughs> as we mm -hmm. at Carnet are public-private <laughs> yes. um, institute. So yes, um, I'm looking very much forward to this. So, uh, Jose, in your lectures, you also often mention also the this thing that technology and new new technologies that that we are seeing now on the streets. Um, are not a solution, right? Yeah. So they they are part of the solution, but not the solution itself. And and you also refer to comprehensive management. Yeah. Um, what? So can you perhaps also like? Basically, let me start with uh, like a look back. Yeah. Basically, let's take the example of recycling. Recycling had been a success, notwithstanding the scandals that happened in the in some industry that basically uh, some companies were not doing what they're supposed to do. But recycling, uh, recycling provides a very uh, important example. Recycling had been a success, for wo a success worldwide because it began with inducing changes in the behavior of the consumers. Mm. I remember 45 years ago, I was basically uh, at a meeting at the, at the, um, at the city government, Santo Domingo, and I remember a person who told me, we could only reduce the, uh, the waste problems if, if the citizens collaborate with us. I remember thinking in my naivete of my young years that this guy was discharging his responsibility. Is very blaming the consumers for for the shortcoming of his job, and over time I understood that he was right, because if we do not recycle as the, our waste, it's very difficult to make a recycling program a, a successful. And that model, and I decided to discuss it. Why uh, recycling has worked? Because it entails changes in the behavior of people like you and me. 
the development of new technologies to do the actual recycling, the development of new logistic concepts, new supply chain, and overall. In essence, this is the type of approaches that provide some insight on what should be done with the urban logistics. In essence, we need new technologies. We need, we need to do changes in the demand. Basically, think about the following. I asked the audience here, what percent of all your deliveries of ours is truly urgent? One percent? Five percent? But we all love to, buy, to, to get our gadgets as fast as possible. The implication is if we all put, if we all do that, we are adding tremendous uh, pressure on the system to deliver quickly, and delivering quickly goes again sustainability because no the, the carriers cannot consolidate goods without without changes in our demand that could be done as we did with recycling by education. I remember when I was 18 years, I didn't give a damn about basically garbage or that. Now, if I don't find I mean, a recycling bin, I feel bad. Mm -hmm. yes. you see, and I do all the way through. And the point is that we, we need something like this. Uh, among other things, as you can see, uh, in essence, many of the new technologies that are being deployed tend to triumph in the market because they lower the short-term cost of deliveries. In essence, Without, we need to somehow counteract. Uh, in essence, we need to complement the development of new technologies with policies to educate people like you and me on basically how to use technologies for the. Uh, because in essence, we cannot basically, if we fall in this trap of convenience, this is basically one of the reasons why basically we are going to kill, I mean, the planet in which we live. And somehow, the price of the, of the convenience cannot be the, a detriment of the environment. And somehow, what we need to have is to have comprehensive policies, as mm -hmm. we did in recycling, changes in behavior, new technologies, new logistical systems, et cetera, et cetera. Because again, with the gravity, gravity of the crisis of climate change, in essence, we need to change course. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add something on that? <laughs> well, <laughs> because as I the say, my perspective is, 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 is another one because I am talking from the point of view of these robot autonomous vehicles uh, for distribution. What, what I can say, it is something that um, at present most of this, this delivery is done in the morning or on the day. Mm. But actually with autonomous robots could be that mm. we can part of it doing a night. Yeah. But that implies to change some infrastructure in the houses, in the mm -hmm. shops, because actually the robot will go to, for example, to a house, a private uh, building, and we do the del deliver directly in the, uh, besides the door, and automatically that will be distributed some, to some lockers inside of the buildings. And that could be one way to, to solve part of the congestion, reduce mm -hmm. a lot of. And that means that actually at night, that will be much easier. No yeah. congestions, the noise will be very low, and there is no problem with the pedestrians, and there are <laughs> many other issues that can be solved uh, with this uh, strategy. But that is, again, a way to change the mind of the people and how we're thinking that the division has to be done. And what you say that the uh, if the people require to, to go too fast, it's not sustainable. That's I completely agree. Uh, but yeah. that is another way, okay, uh, looking that the distribution can be 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And yeah. th that could make a big change on the, and, and uh, thinking about this kind of distribution, flexible, yeah, mm -hmm. the thermos cars, small robots, yeah, so thermos yeah. robots that can be immediately distributed, whatever, whatever is required, but um, with an efficient way because that could be then it can be done in that way. No? Mm -hmm. And I mean that, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I say, <laughs> I agree yeah, with you, but you, you say it. <laughs> <then. Yeah. laughs> so yes, thank you. So now I think we have time to uh, open this session to the, to the public and to the audience. And please, so if you have 
questions, we have a mic there. Just raise your hand and uh, come forward with a question. Yes? <laughs> Always the first. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. good, Celeste. <laughs> um, okay, one of the strategies that we can implement in cities to increase the efficiency and also decrease the externalities, as uh, you mentioned before, is to implement these urban consolidation centers. So my question mainly goes to the City Council of Barcelona. Uh, is this integrated in your strategy for the city? Uh, when do you think we can have this? Thanks. Uh, yes, of course, it's, it's integrated. And it's integrated in, a t in, in a two levels. Uh, this is one of the we call front run action, or front, uh, and we are now uh, developing some of them. Okay, and uh, but uh, but well, the na now here it's it's another part of this uh, public-private collaboration. Is that uh, how much how much action from the public sector? Uh, should be done, okay? And our idea is not to become uh, a, a logistic operator and doing things like this, okay? It's just to begin this. Uh, well, I say I say begin, but uh, we will not be the, the, the first one doing this because uh, all all the all the logistic operator use this these uh, consolidation centers, okay? But uh, the idea is some some uh, space that is uh, used by more than one operator okay, that they share the space they um, consolidate the deliveries to one destination and when i say consolidate means that the, the different providers making just one deliver to that um, building okay. so here is the step forward the step for a difficult step forward, and, uh, and and well, at first level we are just making some of them uh, public, okay. Mm, but the idea is that in the future they will be uh, managed by uh, logistic operators. So maybe at first step will be a, a public tender, and uh, maybe three of them. Uh, are managed by one uh, logistic operator, another by an, uh, another one, and maybe at the end it will be no n no necessary public uh, public supply of anything. It would be just yeah, inside the, the market uh, rules that they work like this. Because if at the end is 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 really efficient because uh, you can you can uh, overpass all, all the problems that these these uh, centers have. At the end, it will be uh, good good for the the, the, the economic dynamics. Mm. So the the answer is yes. In the first level, public, and in in the second level, trying to to push that the that the private sector uh, do this. Thank you. So here, there is another question or two questions here. Uh, the mic. Hi, this is uh, Francesc Robuste, professor of transportation. Um, <coughs> Adria, you only uh, implemented one one of these uh, consolidation centers, like 20 years ago, San Andreu Micro Plataforma Logistica, yeah, the San Andreu Logistics Platform. Uh, I'm not going to put a finger on your, <laughs> on your No, no, no. But, uh, you know, the, the, any city should understand that these facilities are part of the city. Logistics has always been the Cinderella of mobility, the Cinderella. Eh? La Venta Fox, la Fenicienta. Mm? Uh, in the same way that we build squares, uh, libraries, or whatever, uh, we need to build these things. Eh? It's part of the, mm -hmm. of the blood uh, uh, circulation <laughs> system of, of the city. And this costs money, of course. <coughs> but you can do many other things 
without investing any money, like approving the local, the local laws, ordinances, approving to have a minimum inventory in the shops, something that you didn't dare to do 20 years ago, since 20 years ago. Yeah. If we have less inventory, the economic order quantity, we have more transportation and more progress. Mm -hmm. But my comment was not related to the city, it was related to Professor San Felipe. And uh, let me tell you that I admire your contributions and to the robotics. But not everything that is possible is useful. And we, not, we, we don't uh, need to implement everything that is possible. Hmm? It's not a need, it's not a must. Eh? It could be, could be. In the year 2000, the Segway was in, on the cover of Time magazine, the year 2000. We all knew that was a mistake. Mistake in the, in the sense that this cannot be implemented in a large scale. They were, uh, I remember that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, paper, that comment, saying that, they were saying that this is gonna be the invention of the 20th, 21st century. We're gonna sell more sick ways than computers. I, I, re I remember that because I thought these people are completely crazy. Uh, they don't know what they are talking about. Something that is very vul vulnerable, very little maneuverable, can, can go at 40 kilometers per hour. Where are we gonna put it in the city? You cannot put it with the pedestrians. You're gonna put it. You're gonna put it with the traffic, and and then we have seen after 20 years that we were right. Hmm? It was a mistake. Hmm? Even though we can see some, but very uh, few proportion. Hmm? Something a robot, an autonomous robot. I'm 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 pretty sure that in the future when you say you know but. I'm not gonna see this, no? Maybe in 50 years, in 100 years, when everybody has like iRobot, no? This Isaac Asimov, everybody has the little robot at home, then maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, yeah. Right? But in this transition, transition means uh, several decades. I don't see that. No? If we're gonna put this, uh, this um, autonomous uh, delivery devices, on the uh, pedestrian uh, sidewalks, th this is a mistake. Right? We are getting rid, we are getting rid of uh, of motorcycles, for bicycles, uh, uh, these personal mobility devices, and now we're going to put these little things. This is gonna, doesn't make any sense. If we're going to put this on the on the bicycle lanes, it doesn't make any sense either. They are going too slow. We're going to have we have, uh, there are gonna be obstacles, whatever. If we put these little things on the traffic lanes, it doesn't make any sense. It only makes some sense, as you said, if we use this at night. But if we're gonna use this at night, it doesn't make any sense either in this transition of two or three decades. Because what we should do is what Professor Jose Oguimberas implemented in New York 10 years ago, 12 and he got a prize in 2010. Is the off hour night mm. delivery and attended of our delivery. At night, why are you gonna use a robot when you can use a van and mm. parking at the door? It doesn't make any sense. And with so instead of saying, you must change the cities, and you, the citizens have to change the mentality, no, maybe we should try to solve, to tackle a problem with the right technology. That's it. Thank you. So there was no well, question, yes, but, uh, uh, I, I but uh, yes. I want to uh, tell something. Uh, uh, and then Adria. No, no, <laughs> I, I want to tell something. Uh, I agree and I don't agree. Uh, I think there are many different types of cities. There are some cities are very dense, other cities are less dense, or rural parts, and there is very different solution for each one. And then I, I see, and then in, if, if you 
talking about very dense cities could be. That is, that is, that there are some problems that has to be solved in another ways. But in another cities that are not so dense, that will be a very good solution. And with respect to that of what you say about the seedway, okay, the seedway is a technology that actually um, I think it has not been working well. Not because it is a big uh, uh, I, uh, vehicle, not, not vehicle, but um, artifact or whatever, than can move because probably it is not, it, it's controlled the stability. It is not well suited for many people. And it's more for that than other reasons. But if you look, take a look in the, uh, I don't know how, the patinete, the, the, the e scooter. Uh, it's, yeah, okay. Step scooter. The scooter, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And that is a very good solution, although that you can see that everybody now, now has that and has produced another kind of problems. Uh, but it's a very good solution. And could be that it is the way to go in this small uh, vehicles of transportation. Very small, then can be parked anywhere, then you can pick up and put that in another place. And that could be the robot. Because you don't need at all to have uh, four wheels, six wheel uh, robots for transportation. You can use this one with only two wheels. And that could be enough. And there are many, many different kinds of technologies that can be applied. Actually, what I think it is many of our uh, motorcycles, cars, bicycles will use technology that we are using at present in robots for uh, moving around. And that will be mixed together between uh, autonomous and semi-autonomous. And that will be the way to go. And that will be possible to solve many of the problems that we are talking about. And with respect to the where to up where these robots has to go. Okay, I think they have to be, that, that is a big issue, that is clear, that's a big issue. But some of them could be in the street completely, because, I mean, um, the city is now changing the rules of road, the velocity that you can go. Most, you can see uh, 30 kilometers per hour uh, up to, instead of 50 kilometers per hour. Many of the city will be pedestrians, big parts will be pedestrian areas. In these parts, then you can use this kind of, of robots, the small ones, not big ones. But in another big rural areas, then you have to use a big one. There are different solutions, and I think we will see that not very far from now. That's what I think. <laughs> um, I'm going to answer the yeah. other things, but just one for me, one idea about this interesting uh, speech. Uh, I think that technology is a contribution and not a solution. And for me, it's the same I said before. Uh, mm, all the deployment of the technology to find a solution uh, can can be useful. One part of this technology to, yeah. to all other other solutions. Um, ab about uh, platforms, uh, logistic platforms in the city. Yes, I don't know. Twenty years ago. We made a first trial in, in, in San Andreu. Then uh, I think we learned what not to do. Okay. Uh, we we uh, learned, I think, really important lessons there. After that, it has been working up above for 10 years. Uh, a, a platform in, in Estación de Francia. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's anyone. <laughs> I have to translate this, uh, France station, mm -hmm. and, 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 and well, it has been working with, uh, we, we put the space, a temporary space, okay, and, uh, and it has been working uh, under the market laws. Uh, mm, other logistic operators paying for, for each deliver and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and now with, with uh, next, next generation um, funds, uh, we have a project to, to put in service 10 more platforms in the city. But always saying that <laughs> we are not going to do this business. Uh, we are not trying to make a public business about this, okay? S try to, to, to begin with this. And about, about the, the local regulations, uh, there are some regulations about space needed for, for logistics and so on mm -hmm. in, in big in, in, in big stores and so on. And now we are developing, uh, this, is, this is a very interesting uh, way of work, 
with, to, to develop. And, uh, and now we are changing the, the regulation uh, to allow, allow the logistic operation in, in parkings, in off-street parkings. Uh, we are changing this, uh, um, uh, well, about urban rules and so on, because uh, it's necessary to do some change to, to have this activity, this full activity in these very useful infrastructures we have in the city, in these this parkings off street. Yeah. Thank you. And Jose, you also wanted to... I wanted to uh, make a comment regarding the... Uh, I think basically the city has a, a, very role, a very important role to play in, in, in freight land use. Because basically, the, the city, the city of Barcelona, is interested in doing a long-lasting change. I would say, try the main focus should be on, on land use, trying to foster compact supply change. Why do I say that? Uh, efforts like associated with urban consolidation centers uh, could help, but they are typically constrained by the amount of space that is very small. Just to give you some numbers, uh, I would expect that in a city like Barcelona, for every person living here, there is, uh, I would say, between 30 to 35 kilograms of supplies delivered every single day. 30 to 35. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the implications of that? I mean, multiply this by the number of people, and you get the number of the, the amount of cargo. Now, one metric ton of supplies requires 25 square meters of space. Now, when you do that, basically, you f easily f find out that the amount of space needed to storage is gigantic. You see, and somehow you need to, ha it's not only one UCC that you need, you need a lot more. And basically, trying to foster compact supply change, uh, doing like the city of Paris doing, that they have basically, it's not only one, they have like hundreds, a mini, a urban distribution centers is, is a better way, it's a, it's a, it's important. Because in essence, you need to provide facilities that allow bigger vehicles to penetrate into the metropolitan area and from there, from that deliver using sustainable vehicles. But that requires space. But keep remember, I will say, all of you remember these numbers, basically 30 to 35 kilograms per person per day and then the 25 square meters that you need for to handle this. Uh, and basically, uh, this is a key, a key factor. And uh, try to foster that. You do, not, you do not have necessarily to pay for the infrastructure. If you make the land use friendly to the logistic companies and the carriers and the manufacturers, they will invest in that. And you only have to set the table. And they will, uh, they, they will come to come to it. <laughs> This is the idea, and not only we are only the big city inside a metropolitan area, and we're not alone. The land use, we are a lot of factors here. Yeah, of course. Sure. Mm -hmm. Of course. So I think that we have time for another question. So one, yes, perhaps. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, I'm Luis Alegre from Mobility Director from the. Transport, Metropolitan Transport Authority. Uh, there was two ideas and, and a question. Two ideas that you have said, the, the opponents say. One is education. Mm -hmm. I remember about recycling. I was working in Tarrasa. There was a competition between neighborhoods uh, to improve the recycling because it was very bad. It was incredible how improved because there was a competition between neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the worst cities, and my colleagues that they work on cycling, not me, they have this idea, and it was, an, it was a really big improvement. So I think education needs leadership. Yeah. And that goes to the second question that it was, for me, a little bit of strange words. Oh, I'm not absolutely with Adria about the idea of there is something it's changing. We have to regulate uh, logistics currently. And maybe 40 years ago, no. It's something that is changing. Then my question is asking you, 
not you, eh? the three <laughs> of us, eh? but, but because you have made me think about that, no? the, because I, the last 10 years I've been thinking we should regulate, we should make taxes, we should make things about, but all about a new regulation in the Catalan government, and then in the cities, and then I don't know. And also at the end, also you have an opportunity with the new uh, urban planning of the metropolitan area. No? But my question is about that. What do you think, the three, the three of us, about increasing regulation in the logistics, uh, increasing in a hard way, not a little bit, eh? a little thinking. We have to go and then began to regulate these logistics with laws and things like that. Yeah, eh? Perhaps and short I, answers and we start here. This and is then my question. No, yeah. no, the other was yeah. more. <laughs> well, basically, we have undertaken, like, uh, I mean, global research on the effect of regulations. And, uh, and uh, the conclusion that we have is that regulations are needed in case the behavior of an agent is not consistent with what is social optimal. What we have found is that in the case of the uh, of the, the the carriers, the companies, the, the trucking companies making deliveries, they are interested in what? They are interested in minimizing the the cost of deliveries, minimizing travel time, and they are also interested in, in maximizing the use of the vehicles. This is how they make money. But what is social optimal? Minimize travel and congestion, maximizing the use of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. In essence, the carriers are already doing a, the, a, a doing giving the constraints posed by the receivers and public regulation. They are doing the social optimal. In fact, all the all what they have studied, including simulation data, indicate that in, there are a set of, res, of of regulations have a role to play in some circumstances in which they are not following the social optimal policy. Uh, in many cases, what they have found, the, 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 the carriers are transporting cargo in the, hour, in, the, in, the, in the day hours, not because they enjoy traveling congestion, it's because the customers demand it. If they have, you see, <laughs> the, size of the, the decision pertaining to vehicle type, time of travel, route, are basically social optimal. If they produce too, mo too many externalities, then it's not because they want to produce it. They have been forced typically by the customers. And that's something I would suggest you to, to consider. You see, be careful with regulations. Yeah, please keep it short also because of time. Okay. <laughs> um, I think, as I said before, this is a, a well, this, let me say, a game, okay, a chess game. Uh, we, uh, the administration, defines the the the, the table, the, the playing table, the rules, but the players are prepaids. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what can we do? We must put some regulations. This is mm -hmm. our <laughs> our authority, our responsibility. Okay, and, uh, and in my opinion, also some uh, incentivate some actions. Okay, and uh, I put I put mm, two examples about this: uh, uh, the, the problem or the benefit on make a regulation. And I think that if the, the, the strategy is shared with the with the private sector, we will find these good rules and good uh, good incentivation. Uh, carrots, mm -hmm. okay? and uh, let me put two examples that if we convince, uh, and sometimes it's the prebate that ask us to put some rules. The 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 time that is low, uh, uh, um, the, the in the spaces, the spaces for load and unload in the streets. Okay, so uh, we have now 30 minutes is the 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 time allowed there. Okay, more than 30 minutes, you get a fine. Uh, if if we take out this this time limit, uh, well, th they they want this time limit because they need a hike, uh, uh, hike uh, um, rotation. I don't know <laughs> okay. And uh, another another example is that you say uh, 
will you pay if we give you some service in the public space that allow you to be more efficient? Mm -hmm. And this, let me say, uh, not formal uh, survey, uh, most of them, they say yes. So if, put, if we put some tax that, let me say, it's in a good direction, uh, they are agree with this because uh, they don't like to, to, to be in the congestion, no. they don't like to get mm -hmm. fines, they don't like, and they, okay, I'm, uh, I would pay, I would pay if, if I have some, uh, some, some minimum level of quality mm -hmm. in my activity in the city. So I think that we should put some regulations, there are regulations, more regulations, uh, more carrots, uh, mm. may, maybe uh, taxes, but uh, for me, this is not the important thing, the tools. The important thing is that anything we do mm. is in the, in the um, aligned with the strategy of increase the efficiency and reduce the, the externalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. Well, actually, I have almost nothing to say because <laughs> I am not an expert on that. And uh, <laughs> the only thing that, that what I, I can say it is uh, when we put uh, autonomous robots in the in the city, the first thing is they has to be allowed to to be on the city. <laughs> <laughs> that is something that is not allowed at all. <laughs> that is the thing. The, and what we have now in the Logis Mile project, and we are and we make a demonstration last week mm -hmm. in in Splugas. It is we have included uh, the general, um, the DG DGT, the Directory of the General Traffic, in order to to approve some. Uh, it has to be, uh, I say, uh, uh, approve the vehicle as uh, the, this autonomous robot as an autonomous robot. That is something that we are doing that. And also we did some uh, work with the City Hall of Barcelona that some previous years in order to work on that but still is something that has to be done, that's all. So, okay, so thank you very much. We, we came to, to the end and are like some minutes uh, above of, of our time schedule. I thank you very much for your attendance here. I think that uh, we have a lot of mm. optimization problems <laughs> and social optimization problems uh, raised here and, and left for the future. So all of you have uh, work <laughs> on that. And just thank you very much for coming and have a good evening. Thank you.